the pandemic restrictions has limited people from doing actual access to uh, on-site gambling and restrictions in casinos and so forth. So overall, gambling has decreased uh, in the United States. But among those who have problems, problem gamblers and pathological gamblers, there's been an increase in that problem. And there's an increase actually in um, the incidence of people who gamble, uh, who meet medical diagnostic criteria for that condition, pathological gambling. I'm gonna explore why it is certain people's brains have these anomalies, which uh, result in them experiencing pathological gambling and how the, this develops and, uh, and what the criteria for that development is. So I hope to really, uh, the goal is to diminish the shame, diminish the guilt, diminish the uh, all of the misinformation about pathological gambling and with the treatment, the brain does heal in the brain's ability with its plasticity and its ability to uh, form new connections allows it to become uh, highly functional again. I think the, the most surprising and fascinating thing is that despite, um, despite a lot of research that validates that these are treatable and manageable conditions and that the treatment for these conditions really result in tremendous benefits to society, to the family and to the individuals who are involved, that we continue to have less resources for treatment. We certainly do have relapses, but uh, when we compare relapses to treatment for addiction, we have actually less relapses than we get uh, when we treat hypertension or we, we treat diabetes or we treat asthma or treat panic disorder or depression. And yet still we don't have enough treatment resources. I think the greatest inspiration is that there was, there, and there continues to be so much stigma and so much misunderstanding about people who um, are vulnerable to this condition. And uh, they're often portrayed as being weak, bad, or having no control, or having actually no desire to control their behavior. When in fact, uh, much of the research continues to show that people who are vulnerable because of these differences, the differences in their brain that allows this condition to occur, that these people are much more intelligent, much more sensitive, much more creative, much more aware than the general population. And what's inspiring is to be able to help people understand uh, their value. A lot of the great things we've accomplished in our society and continue to accomplish are made possible by people who are in long-term recovery. And we need to inspire or attract more professionals to get involved in this field.